Hey there, are you looking to add AI to your .NET applications? Today I'll show you the easiest way using the official OpenAI SDK that just hit stable version. No fluff, just straight up practical coding that you can use today. Here's the deal. Microsoft and OpenAI have been working on this SDK for a while now, but on October 1st, something big happened. They marked it as stable. This is huge news for .NET developers because now we can confidently use it in production apps. Think of it as your direct line to OpenAI's brain, but in C-sharp. Now we've got something rock solid to work with. Let's take a quick peek at the GitHub repo. See how active it is, regular updates, good documentation, exactly what you want for a tool you'll be depending on. Time to write some code. We'll start with the most basic implementation, just sending a single prompt to ChatGPT. But stick around because what comes next will transform this into something much more powerful. First, open up your terminal and follow along. .NET new console, minus N, OpenAI SDK demo, CD OpenAI SDK demo, .NET add package, OpenAI. Let's make sure everything's working. We're going to do .NET build and .NET run. If you see hello world, we're golden. Now let's jump into VS code and write some real code. First up, we need the chat namespace. This handles all our back and forth with OpenAI. Add this at the top using openai.chat. Now here's how we create our chat client. Chat client client equals new model GPT 4.0 and you can choose to use any other model if you want to. API key, your API key. But as you know, we shouldn't put our API key right in the code. Let me show you the right way to do this. This is optional, but I have to show you. First, let's grab these packages. .NET, add package, Microsoft, extensions, configuration. Add package, Microsoft extension, configuration, file extensions. .NET add package, JSON. Now let's create an app settings.json file. Touch app settings.json. Open AI API key and paste in your open AI API key here. Now let's read that key properly. We're going to do builder, new configuration builder. We're going to set the path, add JSON file app settings.json and then we're going to do configuration config builder.build finally i'm going to do string api key config and we're going to read this api key value from our app settings.json file it's going to be openai api key and if it doesn't exist i'm just going to throw an exception so that we remind ourselves to make sure that the key exists Next, we're going to use this API key string value instead of pasting our actual key here. So we're going to do chat client, client equals new model GPT-4.0 API key, and we'll just pass in API key. Let's try a simple chat. Chat completion, completion, client, complete chat. Hi, my name is Jeff. Now I'm going to log this to see the response. So I'm going to do write line GPT, and then we're just going to get the text value. And if we run this, I'm going to do .NET run. Okay, pretty simple so far. Now let's make it more interesting. The model knows my name, right? I mean, I just told it. Let's try something. You know what? I'll just create another completion. Let's call them completion A and completion B and simply ask it, what is my name? Seems logical. Well, let's run it and see what happens. So I'm going to do .NET run. And it has no clue what my name is. But why? Well, this is actually a common gotcha with LLMs. Each completion is like starting a fresh conversation. It's basically chatbot amnesia. But don't worry, I'm about to show you how to fix this. Okay, let's make our model remember things. Well, think of it like having a conversation. You need to keep track of what was said before. That's exactly what we'll be doing with this list of messages. So let's do var messages, new list, chat message. And then we're going to add a system chat message. You are a helpful assistant. Let me break this down super simply. This messages list is like a conversation transcript. The system chat message is like giving the AI its job description before we start. This is optional, but good to have if you want the model to respond in certain ways, like a pirate or always in French or something. You could also give it roles like you're a stand-up comedian, so act like one. 
and then it's going to make jokes all the time while responding to you. Anyway, it's optional. Now watch this. Here's where the magic happens. I'm going to do while true. And then I'm going to say console write you. And I'm going to take the user input. So whatever we enter in the console. And then I'm just going to check if there's any user input. If not, we're just going to break. But if we have one, I'm going to append it to the messages list. And then we're going to send the whole conversation to the AI model, including the list, everything inside. Then I'm going to do AI, just log the response from the AI. And I don't want to forget that when the model responds, I'm just also going to append its response to that messages list. So let's append it by doing messages.add new assistant chat message and then the text value. This way, the next time we prompt the model, everything is there. Now, when you ask, what's my name, the AI can actually look back through the conversation and actually remember what we told it earlier. Pretty neat, right? Let's test it out. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to say, my name is Jeff. Okay, next I'm going to say, what's my name? And boom, now it knows my name. That's the power of maintaining chat history. A couple of quick things to watch out for. Keep an eye on your API usage. Each message counts towards your coda. The more history you keep, the more tokens you use, and the more you pay. Make sure to handle any API timeouts or errors in production. And this is just scratching the surface, to be honest. With this SDK, you can also work with different OpenAI models, generate images, create embeddings, handle audio, and lots more. So there you have it. You've just unlocked how to add OpenAI's capabilities to your .NET app, complete with conversation memory. Pretty cool, right? All the code you saw today is on my blog, which is in the description below. I've also included the official link if you want to dive deeper. Now, quick favor, if this saved you from hours of reading documentation, how about a like and subscribe? And if you're curious about other AI features like images or audio, do let me know by dropping a comment below. Think of it as paying it forward to other developers. Plus, it helps me convince the YouTube algorithm that coding tutorials are more interesting than cat videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.